Hello world, welcome back to the Razer RC. Today we're doing the full review of the Radio Master MT12. Possibly a game changing radio in the Surface uh, RC space. And I've had this for a few months and honestly it took me a little while to try to understand this radio. But I just want to share my thoughts. I will have links in the description below where you can pick one of these up. And the main thing we're going to try to answer is what is this radio all about? To be quite honest, I only understand basically the tip of the iceberg with this radio. I am by no means an expert. There are tons of videos on this, a lot of tutorials, uh, training information, that kind of thing. But just want to share my thoughts as someone who's primarily a surface, uh, more on the bashing and racing side. I have many, many radios out there. Pretty much every radio under $300 uh, I will have a review on. So feel pretty qualified to, you know, kind of talk about radios in general. So this is the very first what they call OpenTX or uh, Edge TX radio. And so those of you not familiar, OpenTX is basically like a uh, operating system standard that you know the RC community came out with. I think primarily originally from the quad space or flight space. And then Radio Master has radios in that area. And they finally came out with a surface transmitter, uh, which is you know specifically for cars, boats, that kind of thing. So for the most part, you know, OpenTX was uh, more on the flight stuff. And then what happened was at some point they decided to split off and create Edge TX, which is specifically for uh, surface stuff. So OpenTX was the original standard. Edge TX is the surface specific stuff. So a little bit more geared towards uh, surface radios and then what they thought would make uh, more useful in that area. So uh, the Radio Master is the first one in that uh, space. It is kind of interesting. We'll talk more about that. But uh, first off, it's stuff that comes with it. Very basic manual, not really much information um, stuff in Chinese as well. I think some QR codes. Well, maybe not QR codes, um, but yeah, you will have to check out Radio Master directly to find some information, but honestly, it's not even the best information. It does come with a battery, uh, you know, four double A, uh, plugs you can also uh, charge or run it directly off a battery off a 3s or 2s a lipo or life uh, i've got a you know standard was a js xrt plug i think it's called also comes with an additional strap or additional switches here for the front so this is a very modular radio uh, it comes like this but there are modifications where you can add additional you know switches there on the base you can also have a little plug or adapter that you can mount an additional transmitter on top so uh, this does come in two versions an elrs which is their I think it's called express long range system or they have their four in one so four in one is just kind of a backwards compatible transmitter module that is supposed to work with a lot of different uh, protocols like FHSS and stuff. At the time of this video, they are working like uh, Traxxas TQ compatible uh, protocol. They are also working, I think, on a Spectrum one. I think maybe the older Spectrum ones work. Uh, I believe some of the older FlySky ones work, maybe Radiolink as well. So theoretically, it can work with any of those standard uh, receivers. But at the time of this video, you know, you have to check on what is actually supported because for sure the TQI is not supported. I'm pretty sure the Spectrum DSMR is not supported. So it is quite limited but the goal or the theory is that eventually you know more and more product calls will be supported as this becomes more popular but at the time of this video you know not quite there yet the elrs is really their uh, performance protocol so if you want to just run uh, elrs uh, protocol that's the one you would get that is really for long range and high performance uh, racing type applications so that's the one i got because i'm really more on the performance side than i am the interoperability side but the cool thing is you can actually get one version and then get that uh, uh, transmitter module and hook it up and you would be, be able to run another module up here so you could actually have both of those uh, you know when those if that's something you want to do be able to support everything there's also another nice little USB cable for updating your software or charging um, and then a little I guess hand strap it's not even a you know lanyard or anything like that and then here's another optional uh, little, I don't know, four-way uh, switch here for that base. So there are a couple different options you can use to, uh, you know, basically configure more channels and switches and that kind of thing.
The hardware itself is Surface. It is a 10 channel or what basically a 10 input uh, radio. So you got your steering throttle, you got five switches up here. This is a three way switch and these are like your T1 through four, which are traditionally trim. You got two variable rate knobs here. You've got a button underneath for your thumb and then two uh, switches here. This is like a left, right and push button. And then this is just a one way or a single button press. And then you got one on the base, which is not labeled. So not really sure uh, how you configure that. And then there's a plug here uh, for charging the battery. And then there's also a little cover here where you have additional ports. So DSC, so you have direct servo connection. Uh, if you want to control a server directly through that protocol, you can. Uh, a little USB port to update the software. There's a little stand, uh, smart card uh, holder and then headphone jack, and then what they call an auxiliary port, which looks like a Futaba plug thing. So I don't know if you can directly control something through that, but that is additional thing. I don't think the uh, controls are reversible. Uh, I'm not totally sure, it didn't look like it was, but you know, maybe I don't understand that correctly. Lanyard strap, and then there are additional, you know, basically mounts for, uh, you know, accessories, antennas, that kind of thing. So there are four additional mounts there in addition to uh, the, uh, you know, expansion ports like I mentioned. So uh, that's what you get hardware wise. Uh, we're gonna turn on the radio. You hold down the power button here, it boots up. Flipping the switch does not do anything. Anyways, channel monitor, if you hit page, so you can see what the different channels are doing, you know, your trim settings. Um, I think that's it. So this is kind of your general stats. I think that's a timer and then the time. So 8.2 volts on the uh, batteries in the radio itself. So nice little thing that shows you uh, what's actually going on. And then we're gonna kind of walk through this a bit. So this radio is a bit more complicated. Uh, we'll start with systems. So what they have is the tools. So like I mentioned, this is a very modular uh, radio. So you've got internal uh, programs. That's what I would, you know, identify the tools that basically the internal programs that you can use express lrs like i mentioned those are going to be the tools to uh, modify uh, your elrs uh, transmitter module so i have mine to the set to the fastest pack rate f1000 you can also slow that down actually if you want more distance so it's kind of a trade-off if you want higher frequency higher uh, pack rate for more you know uh, responsive controls or you want something more for distance maybe not as responsive but you're going to get a little bit of range uh, and there's just tons of stuff here i'm just not even going to try to understand or whatever um, because i really do not so in addition to express lr to modify the transmitter directly they have this tbs agent light which again i think is uh, something to be like an interface to be able to actually modify that transmitter module so uh, lua is from what i understand uh, like a scripting language or something to basically like interact with the various uh, components on your radio so for the radio master mt12 again you can modify all those different things just like the uh, elrs tool but this is going through the lua tool and to be honest i'm not really sure why you would have one or the other but those are the different things you have available and then you can go through uh, the second menu, which is all your uh, smart card stuff. So again, uh, you can update the firmware on this from the smart card. You have logs, models, radio screenshots. Again, scripts are programs that you can run off the smart card. So I have a smart card in there and you know, kind of an interesting thing. Um, I actually ended up like, you know, downloading Tetris. So uh, you can actually run Tetris. Uh, on your radio it's just a little program that um, I installed and you know you can like <laughs> play Tetris on your radio so like I said this is basically a very uh, modular or you know uh, component type of thing um, it's just very configurable and that's really I think what they are going for with the radio master making something that's very generic OpenTX or Edge TX is very generic to be able to run on any type of hardware or any any transmitter in theory. Radio Master just happens to make the MT12, which is a piece of hardware that the software can run. But you know, they made it very generic uh, to allow you to be able to run uh, different things. So uh, you know, that was a smart card. Radio setup, you can set the time, sound, beeps, all that kind of stuff, uh, particularly for your radio. 
global functions i'll be honest i don't even understand what that is um trainer you know you can hook this up to another radio have this master or slay basically uh, two radios that are controlling the same uh, receiver uh the hardware you can calibrate i did that out of the box and then some information about the version you can obviously update the firmware all that kind of stuff so this is uh what came on the radio and then uh, on the model side, again, you've got more stuff. So there are a ton of models. I want to say like 50 or 40 something. Yeah, 60 uh, different mo modules that you can select, uh, obviously. So a lot of options there. You can set up everything for each individual module. I don't understand why there's a model name and a name, but that's just the way it is. <laughs> Couldn't really tell you why. Um, drive mode so from what i understand these are basically different configurations you can have for this particular model maybe you've got a drive mode with certain settings that are for you know slow speed stuff and then maybe you have like a high you know maybe you got a speed vehicle so you've got different drive modes that you can you know flip with the switch to have it drive in certain uh, configurations uh it seems to be a bit more of like an aircraft thing but it is supported again here on the uh, surface stuff inputs are rather interesting so rather than these being all channels these switches are all what they call inputs and then you have to basically assign every input so for example input throttle is assigned a, a particular function um, so in this case my radio out of the box actually had throttle assigned to steering and steering assigned to throttle so it was kind of backwards um, so that's why you'll see my throttle input is actually assigned to my steering function and then uh if you go on to the channels, you actually see that channel one is assigned to the throttle function. So channel one and two are basically assigned to reverse of what you would typically expect. So that's why mine is backwards, but you know, channel one is assigned to throttle function and throttle function is assigned to this trigger, trigger input. And that's why it actually works. You know, things seem kind of backwards, but you can obviously assign every channel to different uh, switches and stuff like that. That's just kind of how mine was assigned. For each channel, your endpoints are what they would call uh, basically min or max. So it is very different on this. For, so for example, channel one, which is going to be my throttle in this particular case, min and max is the endpoints of that throttle. So uh, actually channel one is steering, but it's assigned to the throttle uh, function, which is actually steering, kind of backwards. But anyways, uh, so rather than having, you know, left endpoint, right endpoint, or travel, or, or terminology like that, they call it minimum and maximum for every channel. You can inverse it, you know, if you want to reverse uh, the uh, direction of that. Um, so yeah, things are a little bit backwards, but you know, some inf information that might actually help you figure things out. And then the rest, I just have to hundred uh, percent endpoints, uh, negative hundred to hundred. So nothing has a endpoint. It's just a min and a max, which again is a little bit odd. So you can have curves for each channel, which is very nice. Uh, you can have switches assigned to do different things. So uh, logical switches, I guess are uh, again, uh, they're not the physical switch. You can assign every every physical switch or input to a logical switch and then have that logical switch do certain things. Um, and then special functions, I did not play with this, but um, I think you can have these logical switches do different things. So you could have a bunch, you know, start, uh, you know, timer, stop timer, uh, do LEDs, that kind of thing. So kind of interesting how they have that. Uh, it is support telemetry as you might expect. So you can hook up different sensors to your car and monitor all that through the telemetry. And then finally the display. Um, different screens. I guess you can configure the screens to show different things. Not really sure, but um, that is there uh, available. Yeah, that's kind of an overview of the Radio Master MT12. Like I said, I really don't understand the deep dive of this radio. I didn't play with it more than just basic two-channel stuff, right, driving on a racetrack. I was more interested in actually how the radio felt and to see if this would meet my needs. I would say out of everything that is potential with this thing, the four in one uh, transmitter module, if it could actually control all of my DSMR spectrums, my you know Fly Sky Ants or my HFDS3 uh, receivers or things like my Traxxas TQI receivers, I would say this is probably would be something I would actually replace all my RTRs uh, with because then I could use those existing receivers, use single radio, which would be awesome rather than having a different uh, radio for every uh, type of vehicle. I have a spectrum radio for my uh, spectrum.
cars. I have a Traxxas radio for all my Traxxas cars, all that kind of thing. So uh, that is interesting, or that is potential, but not quite there yet. Uh, the other thing I want to mention, the actual controls are, feel very good. So there are uh, trigger adjustments. You can move the trigger back and forth. You can adjust the tension. I think I had mine all the way cranked up because it felt kind of light, but even on max uh, spring rate, it still feels kind of light. The uh, steering again has a spring tension adjuster right there so you can tighten or loosen the steering wheel to how you, I would say it's very smooth. This rides on ball bearings and rather than using your normal pots or potentiometer uh, physical connectors to, you know, basically uh, check the you know the position of the steering wheel it actually has hall sensors which are electromagnetic sensors from what i understand so it is super smooth there's no physical context it's just sitting on a bearing i would say the quality of this is very high in terms of the actual controls feels really good radio is a little bit on the heavy side i would say that's probably the you know main downside but it's got a nice display these buttons are a little i don't know a little <laughs> a little bit large and you know kind of basic looking but i think they did a decent job and then the antenna does actually swivel up right there Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is the receiver. So it came with this, which is the E was E R three C I very tiny receiver. I'm sure they make other receivers. Um, the only thing I would note is that uh, it felt like this is almost like too small. So uh, compare this to another receiver. Let's see where I can grab. I don't have one handy, but um, actually these plugs are very tight. I actually sometimes use like a two pin plugged as for my fan and it didn't fit because it's just like probably 0.1 millimeters bigger than a standard Futaba plug. So that was a little bit disappointing, but uh, rather interesting that, you know, um, it is so small. It's honestly almost like too small, but for a tiny little receiver, this is a performance uh, receiver um, that is nice. I do like that, you know, there's no external antenna or whatever. So that was pretty cool. So what I want to talk about, you know, finally at the end of the day, is this a good radio? Well, the price is actually pretty fair. You know, 120, 130 bucks is not that much for a pretty quality uh, radio. It is, again, a generic platform that extent is extensible, right? You can add, add additional transmitter modules to run different protocols. You can have more switches. Uh, it's actually 16 channel, I think, out of the box. And if you add additional transmitter, it goes up to 32 channels. So for long range, high speed stuff, I think there's definitely potential here for crawler stuff with tons of channels. You need a lot of weird mixing controls. You want to configure your buttons, everything to do very complicated things. I think this is also very good. Um, if you like messing with tuning, uh, just playing with thing definitely this is something where if you're afraid to update the firmware this is not the radio for you because the receiver has its own firmware and it's actually got its own interface where you can use uh, basically a web browser to connect directly to receiver modify things obviously there's scripts and stuff running on the radio itself where you can modify things you will want to update the firmware periodically to get the latest updates and you will want to kind of watch that community because some firmwares you know maybe have some bugs and stuff so you don't necessarily want to run everything that comes out you just got to kind of pay attention. So uh, this is a community. This is kind of an ecosystem where if you get into it, I think it has a lot of potential benefit. Is it available today? I don't think so yet, but I'd say in a year, two, three, five years, this probably will become kind of a, a standard, a very popular thing. And you, you may see other uh, brands, I think, actually either jump on board or potentially even disappear if they don't keep up. So a uh, great first effort, I think, from Radio master mt12 it's probably not going to replace any of my race radios uh it's probably not really going to replace any of my basher radios because i already have everything else set up for that and this doesn't support that without changing out the receivers on the actual driving side i think performance wise this is actually pretty good i don't know if it's as good as my standard race radio which is the same one mt44 running of hss4 um I didn't feel like it was quite as consistent. I don't know, that's maybe mental or whatever, maybe I'm just used to the sandwell. I would say the performance is really good. I don't think it would be an issue racing this thing, at least certainly at the club level. Um, are pros going to run this? I don't know, maybe one day. Uh, but certainly, I had things set up, I think, to the fastest uh, that would run on my car. I had my receiver running at 300 or 333 uh, uh, hertz. I had my radio set to 1,000 uh, frame rate, so I think, 
performance wise, everything was set up, you know, the fastest that my server could handle. And I would say overall, yeah, I felt pretty good. I didn't really notice any lag or delays or inconsistency so much, but it also maybe didn't quite feel quite as good as my standby. I don't know. That doesn't necessarily come through in the uh, stats, but that's just kind of how I felt. So anyways, uh, those are my thoughts on the Radio Master MT12. Let me know what you think. Uh, don't forget to hit the like, share, subscribe buttons. Uh, look for more videos soon. Thanks for watching.